Hi guys, this is Derek. This video is really intended for just five or six of the young men in my church group that I plan on taking shooting soon. But if this is the first gun safety video that you've come across, if you're completely new to firearms, then I know you'll still be able to learn a lot from this video because I'm not only gonna talk about gun safety, but also what to expect from the first time that you go shooting, how to safely handle and operate handguns, rifles, and shotguns, some of the common mistakes that I've seen people make the first time that they go shooting, or even if they're an experienced shooter, and also some very rare shooting situations that you might run into that are important to be aware of, but that you really shouldn't worry yourself too much about. I also want to add a disclaimer that although I am an experienced shooter, I am not an official firearms instructor and everyone is responsible for their own safety. I hope you don't have an experience like I did the first time I went shooting where I really didn't receive any instruction at all and because of that I got yelled at and I really didn't want to go shooting again at all after that experience. So I want you to have a lot of fun but you need to understand that this is not a game. This is very serious stuff and as long as you understand that and you're not horsing around then it can be a lot of fun. There are four basic rules of gun safety. First, always treat a gun as if it's loaded. This is number one, I believe, because the most number of accidents have happened by ignoring this rule. And what does it mean? It just means to very carefully follow the next three rules. And that is rule number two, always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. This is also sometimes said like, don't ever point a gun at anything unless you intend to destroy it. Rule number three, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. Rule number four, be sure of your target and also what's beyond it. If the first time that you're going shooting is at a gun range, they'll often have a lot more rules than just those four. But oftentimes it has to do with things like no drawing from the hip and firing, or no shooting from the hip, or you can't place your target closer than so many feet away because it damages, you know, will probably cause damage to the structure. I like to add one more rule because there is one exception to following these rules and that is when you're cleaning a gun. So the rule I add is if you're cleaning a gun, you don't have any ammunition in the room that you are cleaning it in. Instructors understand that it's common for people to make mistakes in the learning process. However, they might yell at you to get your attention very quickly. Understand that it's not because they're angry at you, it's just that it's very important to get your attention very quickly. The only exception to this would be if you're horsing around if you're horsing around, you're not only going to get yelled at, but you're not going to be shooting anymore with that instructor, period. That's not only a rule for instructors, but just friends I go shooting with. They all understand the importance of gun safety, and if I were ever in a situation where they were horsing around with guns, I would never go shooting with them again. What should you expect the first time that you go shooting? Probably the first thing that you're going to notice is just how loud it is. A gunshot in movies or on uh, video, on YouTube videos, anything, nothing will prepare you for just how loud it is. And so be prepared to kind of wince every time you hear a gunshot. Your eyes will blink and you'll feel the vibration in your chest. And that can sound really scary, but it's something that you get used to. Even for new shooters, usually by the end of a range session, you're a lot more used to it. Don't be afraid of it. Just be aware of it and expect it the first time that you go. The things that you'll need the first time you go shooting will be hearing protection, eye protection, and make sure that your clothing is not loose. I probably wouldn't recommend a jacket like this because if you're shooting a semi-automatic weapon, the brass will be ejected and it's quite hot when it first comes out. It cools down very quickly, but it can get inside your clothing and be uncomfortable for a second. So a lot of times if you do have a jacket like this, you can zip it up all the way. Just make sure that there's not a lot of surfaces for it to be falling down into and holding that hot brass against your skin because it probably won't cause a blister. It'll just be uncomfortable for a few seconds. The type of hearing protection that you'll need will be either these earmuffs or those little earbuds. The expanding foam ones work just fine. Make sure that they fit snugly in your ear. You want to be sure to protect your hearing because like I said, those gunshots are very loud. 
for the eye protection you're not looking to stop a bullet obviously um, but sometimes that ejected brass will come back in your face or sometimes there's a little bit of dust or debris that might come out of the gun or um, somewhere else maybe off the target or something and you just want to be sure to protect your eyes standard eyeglasses work just fine or safety glasses or sunglasses all totally fine if you go to a gun range oftentimes hearing protection and eye protection will be provided for free there might be a few places out there that might require a little bit of money for it but it should be pretty cheap to rent something to be aware of for sensitive groups like pregnant women or children is that lead is very easily absorbed when you ingest it it's not at all easily absorbed when you inhale lead vapor and so um, a lot of ventilation is provided at gun ranges it's part of the law um, you should be fine just remember if you're in those sensitive groups like a pregnant woman or a very small child uh, make sure to wash your hands very well in fact anytime after I shoot handguns I make sure to wash my hands very well because ingesting lead um, you know any kind of lead residue on your hands if you're handling food afterwards ingesting it is a lot more easily absorbed into your body than inhaling lead vapor before I talk about the safe handling and operation of firearms, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the common mistakes that people make the first time they go to the range. By far the most common mistake that I see is the first time somebody goes up to shoot, they go up, they pull the trigger, and they're so excited and nervous and it was so loud that they go, wow, did you see that? And they'll turn around and be pointing the gun at the people behind them. If you still want to do that, you can do that just as easily by shooting and turning your head and always keeping that gun pointed downrange. The second thing that I won't call a mistake but that I notice quite frequently is people treating the gun like it's going to go off without pulling the trigger and so they'll handle it very gingerly and not want to do anything wrong with it. You can go ahead and hold it firmly in your hand. You don't have to have a death grip on it like this and be squeezing the life out of it you just want to hold it firmly like you would somebody shaking a hand not like you're trying to crush somebody's hand but really just a nice good handshake one of the most common mistakes with a rifle with a scope is what's called a scope kiss and that's where your eye is so close to the scope that when you fire off the shot and the recoil comes back for a split second it actually drives that scope right into the orbit of your eye and you get a little cut and it's very unpleasant it's not something you want to have happen how do you fix that just make sure that mostly the butt of the gun is firm against your shoulder and you're not you know having your shoulder all twisted out like this make sure you have your shoulder and the butt of the gun up tight and make sure you have at least a couple inches of clearance between your eye and the end of the scope. Um, more common uh, failure to feed would be if you have a semi-automatic weapon or like a pistol where after each shot this bolt or slide in the case of a pistol is going to cycle back and then go forward and pick up another round from the magazine which gets pushed up by a spring and then grabbed by the bolt or the slide and then put forward into the chamber. A failure to feed is when the bolt or slide comes back and for whatever reason does not pick up another round even though there's still rounds to be picked up in the magazine. So it'll go forward. Sometimes it'll be due to uh, there wasn't enough charge to push the slide or bolt back far enough and so it won't pick up a round or there might be uh, usually it's a problem with the magazine where you have to tap the bottom to make sure that it's fitting tightly in your weapon and tap it and then you rack the slide or you pull the bolt back and that usually fixes the problem. Failure to eject. That's when you um, have a round, you fire, it cycles back but for whatever reason it does not eject the brass that's already spent in there and so it goes forward into the chamber and you'll usually pull the trigger and it won't fire because it's just a piece of spent brass in there 
stovepipe is another failure to eject where you're going to see that that brass is stuck either in the slide or in the bolt there. And so the way you fix that is sometimes you have to eject the magazine and then pull the bolt or slide back and that should eject the brass and then load your magazine again, keep rocking and rolling. A double feed is where, just like the name suggests, you have two rounds that have somehow been pushed up and try to get in the barrel there. And I'm not going to show you here, but um, usually the bolt will be set back a little bit and you'll see two rounds in there or the slide will be, usually doesn't happen with semi-automatic pistols, but um, you'll see two bullets in there. And again, you have to usually eject the magazine, rack the slider bolt back to clear that. Sometimes you have to lock the bolt back. If you run into those problems, again, you're at the beginner level, just leave it to your instructor to figure those problems out for you. A light primer strike is something that is most commonly found in this weapon here, in a revolver. Uh, in this particular one, for me, I love this weapon, but uh, for whatever reason, probably due to my own hand loads, I get a lot of light primer strikes. So what happens there is you have a bunch of live rounds all in the cylinder, and you go to, again, I checked to make sure this is unloaded, and this is still pointed in a safe direction. I'm showing you for instructional purposes. Uh, I go to fire the weapon, so I pull the hammer back, pull the trigger, and nothing happens. It just clicks. And I know there was a live round right there in the chamber ready to fire. So what happened? Maybe a light primer strike. When I'm operating this normally, when I pull the hammer back and pull the trigger, the firing pin right there comes out and strikes the primer on the cartridge. And if it strikes it too weakly, then it's not enough to ignite the primer and to light the powder that's in the brass and send the bullet on its way. So that's a light primer strike. The dangerous thing about light primer strikes is it can be a delayed reaction. And so if you know there are live rounds in here and you pull the hammer back or you simply pull the trigger and it goes click and not bang, then go ahead and wait a second maybe about five seconds and make sure that there's not a delayed reaction where it might take a couple seconds and then go off which has never happened to me before but it does happen if the live round doesn't go off in about five seconds you should be okay again i am not an official firearms instructor everyone is responsible for their own safety and i want to talk about some of the more rare situations you might see when you go shooting so the first up is called the squib load Squib load, essentially what's happening is the bullet didn't have enough powder or charge behind it, enough pressure to push it all the way out the end of the barrel. Again, it's very rare, but you, the way you counter this, the way you notice it is usually through experience, or you can rely on your instructor if you have an instructor nearby. So you'll be feeling the recoil and every shot should feel the same, bang, bang, bang and it'll feel like a lot less recoil on a squib load and usually on a semi-automatic weapon it won't cycle the weapon. In other words it won't pick up another round and load it into the chamber so you'll pull the trigger and it won't fire again. And you could rack the slide and fire again but if it's a squib load then you're gonna have a chunk of lead stuck in the barrel and that next bullet coming down all that pressure is gonna usually blow up the gun and in very rare cases it can be fatal uh, certainly it can result in some pretty bad injuries and so it's something you want to be aware of not very typical but it is something you need to be aware of uh, next up going back to extremely rare situations there's also something called a slam fire generally if a weapon's in good operating condition and it's been cleaned then you're not going to have a problem with slam fire so what is slam fire it's when you pull the trigger a round goes off normally, the bolt goes back, picks up another round, and the force of the bolt going forward to put that next bullet in the chamber happens really quick. But if it's functioning normally, that should never be a problem. It's how the gun is made to function. But in a slam fire, the bolt or slide will go back, 
pick up another round and the force of the bolt closing will actually ignite the primer and send off another round. So what you'll experience is ba 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 with one pull of the trigger. The last situation I want to talk about is called crimp jump and it's not something you're going to see at all in most ordinary firearms. Typically it happens in very powerful revolver cartridges. But uh, crimp jump happens. These are supposed to be exactly the same cartridge and as you can see one of these things is not like the other. This has crimp jump. This one right here. So what happened was the recoil was so powerful in this weapon that uh, it recoiled this way and the uh, the revolver is holding on to this rim here and it pulls it back so fast and so hard that this heavy lead bullet actually gets pulled out a little bit further out of the case. This is an extreme example. Uh, you should not encounter this ordinarily. It just happens if you don't crimp your bullets down hard enough or in the case of like the Ruger LCR, they, they recommend that you do not shoot uh, really heavy 357 Magnum loads in it because of crimp jump. Because it's not because it's not capable of handling those uh, cartridges. It's just that uh, the gun is so light and the recoil is so much that it increases the chance of crimp jump, which you see right there. I think most of the other mistakes actually happen when you handle a firearm. So let's talk about how to safely handle and operate a firearm. This is a revolver. They're very common for many new shooters to have because they're so simple to operate and to clean and handle. The first thing that you want to do anytime you pick up a firearm is to make sure that it's unloaded. So always being sure to keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction. Never forget that. So right now it's pointed kind of at the floor of my shed and even beyond my shed frame it's not going to hit anything or anyone uh, so I'm not assuming that it's unloaded so the first thing you do on a revolver is to find the cylinder release latch which is located behind the cylinder here and if you're using a left-handed model it's going to be over here so find it and it's not always the case but it's often the case that you will push forward and then using your other hand you'll push that way and it'll release the latch and then you can look right there and see that there are no bullets or cartridges in the firearm so this is unloaded and that's the first thing that you want to do so what I did there when I closed the cylinder and uh, most just so you're aware most people who own revolvers don't like you doing this because it puts too much strain on some components there. So just respect whoever's firearms that you're using and go ahead and just uh, put your thumb right here or on the cylinder itself and push it back in. And then it's um, these timing grooves are not aligned with a tooth that's at the bottom there. And so once it's popped in, you'll grab the cylinder and either forward or backward, just rotate it until it clicks. The way you grip a revolver is to take your strong hand, so if you're right-handed, your right hand, and to the web of your, between your thumb and index finger, is going to go right in here, that part of the revolver, and put it there, and then you're going to wrap these fingers around like that, making sure to keep your finger outside of the trigger guard, so you can just set it right up there, and then you're going to take your other hand, and I'm going to get around the camera here so you can see this. Then you're going to take your other hand and put your thumb right there and then wrap your other fingers so that they lock in with the fingers of your other hand. So it should look like that. Here it is from this side and here it is from the other side. One of the more important safety aspects of shooting a revolver is that when it's fired hot gases are going to be coming out right here and on the other side as well. And so you don't want your fingers to be anywhere near this. I mean covering it. They can be like over here, that's fine. Typically they won't be. But if you're holding it correctly, your fingers won't be anywhere close to that gap. 
because your trigger finger, even though it might be up here, when you go to pull the trigger, it's not going to be anywhere near that gap. And same with that side. So you don't want to be holding the gun like this, certainly. And it's not going to cut your finger off or anything, but it might break the skin and it's going to be very painful and you won't want to go shooting anymore and it'll ruin your experience. Once you've fired a revolver, making sure always to keep your finger outside that trigger guard and keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction. Go ahead and open the cylinder release latch and you'll see your spent cartridges there. These don't have primers in them, these are just brass. But uh, this is the ejector rod on this and so you will always keep this pointed in a safe direction. You can go ahead and point it upwards or straight back either way. Push on this and it'll eject your brass or get pretty close to ejecting them and you can just pick them out like that until it's empty and then it's ready to be loaded with new cartridges. This is a double action revolver. These two are single action revolvers. The difference is in how they operate. A double action revolver and all of these I've made sure are empty and for demonstration purposes I'm going to show you what happens when I pull the trigger and the different actions on these However, these are still pointing in a safe direction, so that if these guns did go off, it's going to go through the wall and into the yard and into the dirt because they're pointing down. So this is a double action revolver, and the way it operates, I can take it and pull back the trigger, and you'll watch the hammer here as it goes back until it's ready to break, and then it fires a single bullet. Or... I can pull back the hammer and you'll notice the trigger moved on this. So when I pull back the hammer, it moves the trigger to a more sensitive position. This is firing in single action mode. And so when I very gently pull the trigger, it goes off. Single action revolvers are different because I can pick it up and pull the trigger and it's not going to do anything until I actually manually pull back the hammer all the way and it locks and then there's only one mode to shoot on this and that's pull back the hammer and then pull the trigger and then it fires and you have to do that on every shot with double action you can just pull the trigger or you can pull the hammer back and then pull the trigger with a much lighter trigger pull the way you make sure that single action revolvers are unloaded is if you look at the back here you'll see this loading gate and um, the reason I brought these two out is because they operate slightly differently this one operates more true to a an actual western style gun where if you want to open the loading gate and rotate the cylinder see I opened the loading gate but the cylinder won't rotate until I pull back the hammer at what's called half cock. That's half cock, that's full cock. So you pull it back to half cock and then you can rotate the cylinder. And so to check to see that it's empty, uh, it's hard to see with the light, but you'll rotate the cylinder and manually inspect each one of those chambers to make sure that they're empty. And don't just count six, count eight or nine just to make sure that you got them all and didn't miss any. On this one, in order to rotate the cylinder, you don't need to put it at half cock. You just need to open the loading gate and then you can manually rotate the cylinder. And this one's a lot easier to see. You can check each one of those chambers to make sure that it's not loaded. And then close it up. Grab the cylinder, rotate it until it locks, and that's it. Now that you've made sure that this single action revolver is empty, if you intend to shoot it, you can go ahead and load it up. And you do that by opening the loading gate, turning in the cylinder until one of the chambers is uh, in line there. And you take your cartridge, which again, this is just an empty piece of brass and you drop it in there and that's ready and you rotate these cylinders only rotate one way so you won't be able to rotate that way 
it's always, um, I think always, clockwise. And so once that's loaded, you turn it to the next one, load up the next one, turn, load, turn and load until they're all full. And then go ahead and close the loading gate and rotate the cylinder until it locks. Again, always making sure to keep your finger off the trigger, outside of the trigger guard. This is the trigger guard. Make sure you keep the finger out and always making sure to keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction. Once you fire the single action revolver, you're going to need to eject the spent brass. The way you do that is making sure that it's pointing in a safe direction, finger outside the trigger. Go ahead and open the loading gate right here. And over on this side, you'll see this component right here. That's a little spring-loaded lever. And the ejector rod is in here. And so you'll use that to eject the spent brass. So now that I have my loading gate open, I'm going to go ahead and rotate the cylinder until I see a spent piece of brass. Okay, there it is. It's lined up. And I'm going to take the ejector rod and use that to, well, since it's just a piece of brass, it actually already fell out. But I'm going to use that to push, and it's going to push the casing out. Always make sure to keep it pointed in a safe direction because it's real easy to forget that when you're doing this. So keep it pointed in a safe direction, and you can point it a little bit up, and then use that to see how the rod came out there. And it ejects the brass. So you got to do that one at a time. Rotate the cylinder, make sure it's lined up correctly, and eject. And just go around like that. This is a semi-automatic pistol. The way you check to see if it's unloaded is you hit the magazine release button, which is usually located behind the trigger. Sometimes it's on this side. This model you can actually switch. But uh, there are different mechanisms to do this. If you're unsure about how it operates, be sure to consult your instructor. Uh, a European-style magazine release is sometimes located up here by the on the trigger guard that you just uh, push it forward and it releases the magazine. But in this case, let me get on the other side here. In this case, you're going to go ahead and... Find that button right there. Make sure your finger's outside the trigger. And then push the button and it releases the magazine. So now we can see that this magazine is empty. No bullet there. This is what it would look like if there were a bullet in the magazine. Okay. And now this weapon is not safe right now. Uh, this is not checked that it's empty because there could still be a bullet in the chamber. And so the way you check that is to, you have to rack the slide back. And so you make sure that the magazine is out of the weapon and you keep it pointed in a safe direction, finger outside the trigger guard, you grab it firmly, and then grab the slide and pull it back. And if there is a round in the chamber, it should eject. Just pull it back firmly. And uh, in this case, since there is not a round in the chamber and the magazine's out, I'm going to go ahead and lock the slide back. Don't worry too much about that. But uh, just make sure to rack the slide so that it comes back and you can manually see that this does not have a round in the chamber. So this gun is empty. It does not have a magazine in it and there is no round in the chamber there. Semi-automatic weapons are a little bit more complicated and so um, if they don't have a magazine in the weapon and you want to pull the slide back and have it lock like I showed you then you'll grab it, you'll pull the slide back and I'm always pointing this in a safe direction making sure my finger isn't on the trigger. You'll pull it back and right here is this uh, slide catch, I guess. Um, so pull this back and then push that up and that catches on the lip there. 
because this slide is spring loaded it wants to always go forward see so pulling back on this and then right there pushing up that'll lock it back so if you want to load it for the first time go ahead and remove the magazine by hitting the release button there you're going to take your empty magazine and I like to have my thumb over the top of the bullet and push the seat of it down in and then back because these steel feed lips right here and right here that's what's going to prevent you from getting that bullet back in so you need to push it down far enough to be under those steel feed lips and then push it back in so you'll take your next round and it gets a little bit tricky when there's a bullet in there because it'll kind of want to jump all over but you'll get used to it and push down and then push back down and back and that's how you load a magazine. If this is the first time this gun is being shot, then once I have my loaded magazine, which this is not loaded, I'll go ahead and put it in my gun. And then I'll need to take a round from the magazine and put it in the chamber. And so the way you do that is to rack the slide. So I'll grab it, making sure that my finger is out of the trigger guard, pointing in a safe direction, grab it firmly with my other hand and pull back. And then this is going to lock back because it's empty. But if there were a round in there, then it would be like this. And then one would be loaded in the chamber. Let's say I just shot this gun. It's empty now. The slide locks back. So I'm going to eject the magazine. I'm going to take a fresh magazine, which has bullets in it. This one doesn't. And I'll insert it. Finger always outside the trigger guard always pointing in a safe direction and then um, you're going to notice right in here that you'll see a bullet right there that obviously hasn't gone into the chamber and the way you do that is remember this uh, s slide release right here so um, there's not one in the chamber you're going to take this make sure your fingers outside that trigger and push it down and it's going to lock forward and it's going to automatically load a bullet into the chamber and that will be ready to fire. So remember on our revolver we had a cylinder gap that we want to make sure to keep our fingers away from. Similarly we want to make sure to grip a semi-automatic weapon correctly. And the way you do that is take the web uh, between your thumb and index finger and you're going to put that right here. And then you're going to wrap these fingers around the front on the grip like that. Go ahead and put your finger right there. Keep it out of the trigger. And um, then you'll take your other fingers and then put your thumb right underneath and then wrap these fingers around like that. And that's how it should look. If you're gripping a semi-automatic pistol correctly, you don't need to worry about this. But what you at least need to be aware of is making sure not to get what they call bit by the slide. So you'll grip it correctly, but when a, um, a handgun, a semi-automatic handgun operates, the slide comes back. And so if any of your hand is up here, I mean, they make it difficult, so you can't really, if you're holding it comfortably, you can't really get your hand up there but maybe you might get some of your skin like that and so it'll push it out of the way but when it comes forward it'll grab some of that skin and be very uncomfortable so just uh, make sure that your you, you the web of your hand is right underneath this beaver tail right there like that this is a semi-automatic rifle it operates much in the same way that a semi-automatic pistol does the first thing you want to do when you pick up a weapon is making sure to keep it pointed in a safe direction. Finger off the trigger is you want to make sure that's unloaded and the way you do that is find the magazine release button which is right here. Push that in and it releases the magazine and then just like the semi-automatic pistol you want to make sure that the chamber is empty and the way you do that on this AR-15 style rifle is a little bit different 
um, the bolt, this component in here is in here is much like the slide. And so this is called the charging handle right here. And I can't pull this back unless I have this button pushed down. See how it kind of releases that there. So I'll pull back on this and then see how it opened up the chamber and it's pulling the bolt all the way back as I pull that back that lever. So if there were a round in the chamber, it would eject that round. So go ahead, making sure to keep it pointing in safe direction, finger off the trigger, go ahead and pull it back a couple times and you verified that's empty. Now if you intend to shoot it, you can go ahead and load a magazine and then so you'll load the magazine, take the charging handle and pull it back making sure to depress that lever. Pull it back and this is an empty magazine so the charging handle a lot like the slide on the semi-automatic weapon the charging handle locks back and the bolt locks back. And so if this did have a round in the chamber it would automatically go forward and load one round into the chamber but since it doesn't uh, remember that button on the the slide of the semi-automatic pistol the uh, slide release this acts much in the same way this is the bolt release and so when I hit that you can hear the bolt go forward let me show you again from this side so I'm going to go ahead and hit that paddle on the other side of the weapon and the bolt goes forward and if there were a round in the magazine, it would pick one up and load it into the chamber. On most of these style rifles, you have a safety select lever. And so you can select either safe or fire. Don't rely on manual safeties. Always rely on yourself to make sure you're being safe. So if someone has already fired this weapon, it will lock the bolt back like this. And a lot like the semi-automatic pistol. And so you'll take the magazine release button, release the magazine, take another magazine that has bullets in it, load it in, and then just like the semi-automatic pistol, you're going to hit the bolt release button right here instead of the slide release. And that will pop it forward, bolts forward, and it will have loaded around into the magazine and you'll be ready to fire again. I can show you from these photos how to safely operate a shotgun. On a pump action shotgun you can check to make sure that it's unloaded by pressing this button here to release the action, pull the action back and manually look in the chamber and see if a shell is in the chamber. Once you've verified there's no shell in the chamber then you can load it by turning the shotgun upside down, always keeping it pointed in a safe direction and then push the shell down and then forward until it locks in place. If the shotgun is loaded, you don't need to hit the button to release the action every time you shoot it. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I'm part of the gun community. Again, I'm not an expert. I am not a licensed professional. But uh, as part of the gun community, I'm enthusiastic about it. And I love being able to teach people about it, um, especially when it comes to gun safety. And uh, it's a great thing to be involved in. Um, it's just fun and it's useful as well uh, but it, it really is a fun thing so don't be intimidated by it uh, certainly be respectful of it but you don't need to be intimidated by it I look forward to shooting with my young men and until next time this is Derek reminding you you're working too hard see you next time you're off the trigger until you're ready to fire and rule number four I don't know I always forget rules. Ready to fire. And rule number far, far, rule number far. You gotta be kidding me. Earbuds, as long as they're in your ear securely, you need to make sure that it's uh, covering your entire ear. Covering your entire ear. The hammer. Are you kidding me? Don't be a beavis, dude. Ta-da! Getting tired.